Nations. And thank you, Brandon Finney, for coming back on to our show. Welcome Last back, time man. we didn't uh, we didn't uh, introduce you properly. So Brandon Finney is a former state rep with uh, the state of New Hampshire and a libertarian, fellow libertarian. Uh, yes. Proud to be uh, on the, I'd say the right team, but uh, we'll get there. Right now we're <laughs> going to talk about music because that's where we want to go. Yeah. You've been hip hop, dude. Yeah, I've been on a really big hip hop kick. I want to hear it lately. Same anyway, uh, Same. Be, uh, you know, pr- you know, pr- uh, prior to us getting onto this, you know, the big, big conversation about what's going on in the music world, uh, you know, thank you guys for having me on again. We uh, love it's, it. You know, it's a pleasure to come back and, and argue with you guys again. <laughs> <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully me. this episode will 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 get a big reach because you know I think that we've cultivated enough you know good talking points for a lot of policy issues that i think that we can touch on but I'll, but we should focus on the fun stuff first yes fun, agreed fun, fun. agreed so um what kind of uh, if you had a playlist of hip-hop right now i want to oh right I now know what's on it okay so sure. normally i'm really into metal you know I, I i sing in a band and i play drums for another band and and uh, that's my primary, uh, you know. That's why like, I'm so interested because <laughs> I, I too listen. I've to... been into hip hop since like around the same time though. Like I got into it. I think the first albums I got into was like the old uh, Wu Tang Clan stuff. Like that I was into like Rough yep. Riders and DMX and all that old <laughs> yep. stuff. Awesome. But that was like the '90s, man. You, you know, and that's that's just kind of what I got into. And Biggie and Tupac, obviously, and you know, there's their big influences and whatnot. But like. I think right now, like who's good in hip hop? Because like I can't stand any of this weird like trap Rumble, stuff that's trash, happening now. It's yeah. all it's all this I'm like copy paste yeah. fucking beat. Yeah, it's 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 all I the can't. you know copy paste beat and it's the same type of you know flow over it and it, it like it never changes and it's somehow like it gets 90s. millions of views and millions of dollars and like you know. So I've been hating on Post Malone for a long time, but I've I've come around a little bit on Let's some of his it. more artistic <laughs> stuff because like I'm his excited. rap stuff is absolute garbage. Like I'll just be straight up with that. Like Agreed. when he raps, he's terrible. But like when he actually like puts his mind to a track, it actually has like some melody and stuff to it. Like that's cool, and, and I appreciate that. I hope that wasn't me. It's nope. probably me. That was nope, that wasn't me. <laughs> hey, no Rogan, phones within the table. If Joe Rogan can do it, fuck it. That's ah, yeah, shit. Joe Rogan. He's he's the leader in the Tonight Show band, right? Like he's got the, he's the podcast. Out I there I was gonna say like as far as the podcast <laughs> circuit is, is concerned, like you can't get any bigger than him right now, and like That's it. whatever he's doing is successful. So like why not emulate it? You know? Yeah. No. I and that, you know honestly, this originally it's funny because we had you as our first guest, but the original idea was I was thinking. I was just going to start a podcast by myself talking about appliances because that's what I did for 10 years. And I'm like, fuck. No one's going to want to listen to that, Mark. Nobody. Well, no, that's not true, actually. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Uh, but they're all people that work in the appliance industry. Yeah. But there's a lot out there. You would have a super like niche market. <laughs> that's that's true. Yeah. But it is a very specific, uh, and there are uh, appliance podcasts out there, so not trashing on you guys out there if you're listening, which you're probably not. I decided There's something for everybody, right? Fuck appliances <laughs> because I don't sell it anymore, and I hated it. Yeah. I mean, I was good at it. I knew, I know, literally everything anyone needs to know about appliances. I'm not saying that overconfidently. It's... It's a sick obsession of things that don't need, you, nobody needs to know about um, ever. That there was a range that also was a refrigerator. You could put your food in it. It would keep it cold all day until you got home and it would kick over. I can see why you would want to, you know what I mean, start doing something like that. I can't. A lot of people, people were thinking the Jetsons. That. Fuck that shit. <laughs> people are idiots. <laughs> I'm kidding. You're right. My dryer can fly now. <laughs> it's got a little song. Bam, 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 arrow. <laughs> I'm just, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm playing the theme in, in, in like in my head right now. Yeah. Me and George Jetson. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> then, like, in the future, His wife left. <laughs> <laughs> the as <appliances> wife's. <laughs> He's, he's fucking a washer machine. <laughs> he's putting his dick inside a washer machine. Sorry. Okay. Oh no, th- th- this that's where we go. You, 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 dude, you should have heard the one with uh, the, the guys from. Oh no, it was the unrest in transmissions one. The one we were talking. With. Unrest in transmissions. Yeah, nice. it was very interesting. It was, well, because it was Doug and and um, and Jeremy, Jeremy yeah. and uh, Justin and I talking. You know, right after Matt passed. So it was like. Mm. It was tough. It was like a top. It was a hard reunion, you know. But it was good conversation. We were talking about yeah. really just yeah. yeah I'm, we're not gonna go Lighten into it again, it, right? <laughs> just because. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were uh, we were going for what 
anything Matt would have laughed at. Man. That was a good. That was a good episode. It was actually our most listened to episode. Ironically, I miss so. Matt. I you know I think about him a God, lot. Yeah, Rest in peace, Matt Fogg. Mm, absolutely. He was a like he was a good bro. Like he was one of those friends where like, man, we've been friends for so long. I have so many memories. Uh, it, it, he like he would just tell you that like you know you're a dick to your face, but still like. You know, give you a high five. You can give that guy all of the. You could prove to him why you're. You know, I can articulate. This is why I don't do it anymore. Matt broke me of trying to convince people because I just, I just like, I would go, here's all of the things and lay it out. He'd be like, no. And I'm like, fuck you, Matt. But I, it, it made Matt me was very stubborn, but like he, that, he like you know? he stuck to his principles, and I, I really appreciated you know that about him, and and okay. you know we always had a good time hanging out, and like I missed the last couple of times we hung out, we uh, went to a show together, and it was just cool just to have a nice time and nothing to worry about any bullshit, and you could just Music chill, memories, man. you know, oh, every and bond, memory. you know, we bonded a lot, and I, and I think that he, he like he must have subconsciously knew something because like he normally wouldn't just like, I mean we hung out, yeah, but like. I think the time frame that he was hitting me up, it was kind of like he wanted to spend more time with me, and it was like, why me? You know, because you have all these people who are in your life, you know. But I think that reach out to everybody. And... He knew that he could be honest with me about how he felt about stuff going on in his life, and then I wouldn't just go blabbing or whatever. So I, I think that's why he wanted to see me, and he was kind of being honest about where he was at in life and kind of how he was feeling with his relationships and his sickness, and and uh, you know, I, I was very honored to be that shoulder to lean on, you know, and. Uh, I had found out at work that he passed, and and that was the worst because I just had a complete meltdown. I was sobbing openly on the production floor, and I had to leave work. You know, yeah. I, I, and I and, and, and I and it's it's it. still rough to this day because it 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 feels like a lifetime ago, but it wasn't that long ago. You know, and it's still no. it's still fresh, but it's still far yeah. away. It's yeah, weird. Totally. It's a strange feeling. Hey, me and Ellie were talking about that earlier. I feel like I was just talking to this dude. I really do, and I feel like he was telling me about his motorcycle that. He just bought and he wanted me to come check it out and I was like, dude, that's awesome. Like I saw, I saw a picture of it and I was like, that's badass, dude. And now like I wanted to see it and then like, oh, I, <laughs> I, I saw him on the road here in town, uh, the big intersection right there, and uh, yeah. I saw him because right around Bike Week and I was like, dude, I'm gonna, I'm gonna borrow your bike. And he was like, no, you're not. And I drove off. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, he literally just drove off on me. It was hilarious. He couldn't, he couldn't drive that thing faster than 45 miles an hour. And he told me about a bunch of times. He's like, he's trying to learn, right? And he's, he stopped over here he's actually, like, with the bike. He's like, dude, dude I can't go like, faster than 45 on it yet. And I'm like... <laughs> I love that. I'm like, dude, you own it, man. Because he wasn't, he was, he didn't care. He was no. shameless about it. He's like, I yeah. can't do it yet. Well, no I'm not shame. Ready. That dude and had he went absolutely hung no out shame. With our friend Steve Macy, and they went driving around on bikes um, yeah. before he passed. And uh, it was like right fucking like two weeks before. I, uh, I feel the same so way. Crazy. Like he was trying to. He re- we we hung out so much, uh, not practice related stuff. And mm. then we were also he was in Ambient Discord, um, right up uh, until he's like, I can't commit to it anymore. And I was giving him shit because. You know how he was. He's super per- personal about uh, personal about stuff. So when he was like, "Look, I can't make it to practice," you know, and but he was going to see fucking, you know, Ripper Owens. I'm like, dude, fuck you, man. You can be in practice. <laughs> yeah. and, you, and I mean, it was kind of selfish in a way. I just wanted, you know, to to play to play and be, I understand you that know, because I love playing music with the guy, you know. Mm. And uh, at the same time, like I I didn't know what he knew. I should have known because he was buying the fucking Camaro and they bought, took all of his mu- music equipment, quit, and sold all of his stuff. Mm. Really? That's like with people online, that whole thing where they're getting pissed off about the fucking amp. And, dude, you don't know what he was going through. He sold all of his stuff, bought a Camaro. He was going to die. Like, fuck your amps. Like, sorry. Fuck yeah. your guitars. Like, I love you guys. Love Steve. Love Jason. Love you guys. Much love. Martyrs community. But fuck all that noise and fuck the drama that was going back and forth because he was just living his life. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing that was so frustrating about even the, you know, uh, just shit with the benefit and stuff. It's just like, this is solely for his kids mm-hmm. to to deal with it now. You know what I mean? And I didn't really consult anybody. I was like, dude, this is where, like, this is where the money's going, going directly to the kids. They're going to have it for Christmas. They're going to, whatever it is. Sorry, I'm going to leave that up to the discretion of the parents. I would want that for myself. Mm-hmm. I just lost, you know, it, it's yeah. not something that should be even be argued about. And that's the thing that made me so, I think, passionately upset to the point where I was just like, 
I just I checked out uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the conversation because Matt wouldn't have wanted all that and he wouldn't want us arguing about it. He so just, just wanted things. I on opted and... out of the argument yeah. and everybody else did too. It's funny when you diffuse an argument, how, if you just stop, how quickly it just stops. Mm-hmm. Stop feeding the fire. You know, I think he would like if he could have seen like how we were all acting after the fact, he would have just laughed at us and made fun of us. And, <laughs> and it's like, what are we all fighting about? Like this wasn't dicks. Yeah. It's not anything that he would have wanted, but anyway. All right. That's what uh, that's what memories are for, yeah. you know. To remember, I, dude, I will remember every good and bad memory, <laughs> fucking ridiculous memory with him. Like we got, man, we got in fights. Remember, when we got <laughs> fights and endless animals. Me and him argued oh, so much fucking... about trivial shit. Oh, Matt and I fought over a girl once oh, that, really? that we both had banged once, and and oh. actually, uh, I yeah. I remember this because he was in. Oh, sorry, sorry, right. it, right. it happens on Rogan. It can happen here. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. I, I hold him to our standard. If he lets that shit slide, so can I. <laughs> I uh, I think that I, I completely remember that. We're not going to go into the conversation. No, I, I'm not going to name names because I'm still friends with her. I remember who it was. And, and she probably hates me still to this day. Oh, I don't doubt I, it. I, I, I was involved in the argument of it, and I said some <laughs> I, irresponsible things. Uh, anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I don't want to get yeah. into that story. Was, That's a long convoluted. Yeah, I was drunk. <laughs> and, uh, in that entire band, Endless Nameless, from beginning to end, I drink a good amount in that band. Mm. Um, and it's weird because it's like I hardly drink at all now. Like I'm, I'm drinking a little bit because it's fucking, who going out to grab that microphone? I twisted my ankle, something fierce, and I thought I was gonna scream like a girl. Wow. And luckily, you didn't catch any of that. You were upstairs, but I'm, I'm sitting in here like doubled over, oh. like yeah, feeling like I'm gonna that. fucking like just <laughs> lose my shit. Like, um... My face probably turned white. Your pants were going to turn brown. Yeah, dude, for real. <laughs> Yikes. Dude, it's happened a few times at Radio Shack. Hey. No, just, hey. <laughs> oh, my God. I remember you used to work store. there. <laughs> yeah, I remember in the hall. Yeah. No, I like hall. Dude, <laughs> I can't, I, even, can't, I, I can't I, even call I, them all. It's, oh, it's, it's, it's the hallway. Yeah. And the I like hallway. That's true. Dude, speaking of drinking, I'm two weeks sober. Uh, congratulations. Man. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I, uh, I absolutely think it's phenomenal because, I, I mean, I really, I have a big issue with alcohol and the aspect of like i i think that it's a shit drug and i really don't like it and the, but at the same time like right now for good example like i probably wouldn't have taken those swigs of that if i had uh, co- the the appropriate amount of you know pain medication and, and cannabis medication but mm-hmm. I, for the most part like i'm using vape cannabis as my primary form of pain and the management mm-hmm. always that is my that's number one topical medication is and then second when it's bad tramadol and that's as of recently after going without and that's after being also on oxycodone for whew, i was a good year and a half heavy amounts of it to deal with the pain mm-hmm. management um you gotta get but fixed I, bro. I have some <laughs> argue and arguments that pain management has a lot to do with where we are mentally also is that pain becomes worse the more depressed we are that's a theory i have um the i suppose that's right because you're focusing on it worse yeah uh right because it's all you have to focus on mm-hmm. and that when you're out and you're trying to barrel through it and you're trying to go through it when i was at at that at baron's trying to wheel around appliances when i shouldn't have I, I mean i really i pushed myself harder than i should have for that job but it was for that job you know what i mean Drove my drove my ankle into the ground. Uh, we got to think of like where we are as a society now too, where where everything is so focusing on, on not just like, the physical pain and trying to manage that or or mitigate it completely, but also like our emotional and cognitive pain. That, and and we see the the rampant cycles of people that are hooked on heroin and and meth and cocaine and all that stuff, and it's. It's sad, but at the same time, it's like people are trying so hard to to bury their pain or to 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 mask it under something to just feel normal or to feel happy for for, for an instant, and and that's where I think that we should be focusing a lot of the recovery um, aspects of it. Do you think that's a condition of society? No, I totally agree, dude. Well, I mean, you know, think about it. Like our our food, like over the past, I would say, fifty years, has gotten more and more processed. I mean, people are consuming, you know, sugar at completely unhealthy. Uh, you know, amounts and and like everything. It's real sugar. It's it's this fucking processed, right. extracted chemically. Okay. Fucking and it's terrible for your body. Yeah, and because it's, it's not real though. I mean, it's like a drug too. Like they yeah. like they've been proven that like the new types of sugars they've come out can. I mean, it's it leads to 
heart problems so why and even diabetes. Argue that? And I think that it is a drug, right? Because they, they, it's not naturally occurring in nature. Mm -hmm. They have to take it, chemically compound it to make high fructose corn syrup. So they're using this because it's cheaper, but they really don't know the results. There was never a case study tested, you know, because we can't see long term. We see everything in the short scope as right. human beings, as everything's right in front of us now. Same reason when you look at your kid grow, you don't watch them grow and notice the major changes because it happens over a span of time. Gradually, yeah. There. But also because we do our fucking damnedest to measure time and it's not measurable. It's immeasurable. It's abstract. It's relative. It, it, it is, but it's also, it's also, <laughs> right. It, it, it's, it's relative, but Throwing it's abstract. Throwing some in there. Right? Because it's, it's, it's so you can't you take a body of time and you apply beats to it basically and those seconds are the beats that you're applying to a body of time but you just grab that body of time out of nowhere what was that from what was that it was Siri. Sorry, it wasn't rogan it can happen here give me bring up the fat beats <laughs> really odd stuff. okay not to like get off subject again no, but it's like fine. that's what we do here yeah Welcome okay to we're gonna come back for those <laughs> who are for those who are paying attention to this podcast episode we're totally gonna come back to politics because that's kind of the reason i'm on i'm on today but uh let's get back to hip-hop for one second because eminem drops like the most ridiculous yes. new album yes. i've ever yes. heard no, I'm not even joking, dude. Like, this is literally probably his second best album he's ever put out. Really? And, Pretty fucking awesome. And I would say that because he's finally, as an artist, getting to the point where, like, he knows that he's in the top echelon and he's still pushing boundaries. And that's crazy for a dude in his mid-40s to agree. still be doing that. And like, yeah, absolutely. And, and, like, he even says something in a song about, like, we're not getting credit for being around so long. And it's like, dude, like, people forget that he's been around well, since, like, the mid-90s. And, like, now... Like nineteen, uh, oh my god, what year is it? Twenty twenty twenty. Like I remember that's that just like thirty years ago out. now. <laughs> I was I was twelve years old when that first album came out. I think yeah. it was like twelve or thirteen, and I thought it was like, what is this? Yeah, his first like, album came out like what, what? like ninety seven, ninety eight, maybe, yeah, and like, yeah. and it, and it doesn't second sound that long ago like to us. Soundtrack to yeah. my fucking life at that time. And to, <laughs> remember we jammed out to that fucking album oh like crazy, god. right? Well, that you know, Dre dropped just all all that. 2001 yeah. the 2001 album yeah, yeah. With, with like the best beats known to man yes. <laughs> seriously blue 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 <laughs> say I can't rap about coke no more everyone knows that song fucking, you just hear fucking 90 cars and yeah <laughs> yeah, all yeah. of them playing the same thing at different intervals, so it sounds jarred and disorienting. And sudden, like, but it's the same the fucking street, songs. Yeah. Well, it's 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 great that like you know we still have people like him and Joiner and Logic and everybody that's still bringing like the lyrical aspect of hip hop, like keeping that alive because you know again like that trap stuff is so popular now and it's so aggravating to me like as someone that actually plays an instrument and can write music and stuff like and that. And writes like, lyrics, right? I mean, lyric. lyric yeah, and like all their shit. lyrics are stupid. They don't even make any sense. They're not even words. They're just skirt. Um, like, what is that skirt? What the fuck is uh, skirt, so, dude? So <laughs> bar me from being, you know, having any value or say in the hip hop <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I don't know what that's supposed to be. A bird? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah. What I don't what listen is to that? enough rap to know what you're talking about. That's in everything. I'm pretty sure Drake is doing that stuff now. I don't even like. I hate Drake. His music is awful. Anyway, I man, I just so I think I'm so out of touch with that music because I just have never listened to really any of there's it. There's nothing that's a, out right now that's like that's like encapsulating what this modern. Like, I like Warren G. Like Regulators from like, when I was a kid. <laughs> like I remember that <laughs> shit. Like Regulators. <laughs> okay, boomer. I, uh, for real, <laughs> my fucking eight year old said that to me. Okay, it's uh, time. Uh, it's uh, time uh, to be done with the okay boomer. Th I am a fucking <laughs> barely millennial. Yeah. Barely a millennial. I'm a millennial. I'm. That's that's. I mean, I'm thirty, I'm, almost thirty two now. But I mean, so you're right on the cusp. Similarly, oh, 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 I think man, I think that we grew up in the best era of time. Period. Because. You know, think about all of the right, progression of cell phones in our hands. Yeah, I mean the the progression of civilization from you know the the Sumerians and the you know the ancient um, uh, 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 Egyptians. Um, yes, oh, I couldn't yes. say that for a second. Yes. <laughs> and then, like, but like you 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 see like you know how we formed our own country through war, and then 
you know, World War Two was was world changing, you oh, know. Absolutely. But then you get but then you get to the point now and it's like we literally saw the changes in technology from when computers were you know, like people could buy a, a personal home computer, which had never been done in the past. And it's yeah. like yeah. now now we have these crazy technologies like I I literally have the entire world in the palm of my hand and I have to pay All like a, like 800 bucks for it. Like, can you imagine? Can yeah. you imagine telling somebody even 20 years this ago that these pocket. things were going to be on our pocket that we we're going to be able to talk the entire planet in real time? That's yeah. insane. Not just that. Video that video chat wouldn't even be a fucking thing. That we thought it would be the thing we'd yeah. be doing in the future, but FaceTime <laughs> is like fuck that noise. I'd rather text. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but we take that like we take all that for granted. For granted. It's just Big it's time. it's just insane that like we came up in a time period where like we still have like all the fun stuff to look back upon, but like we literally saw the dawning of a new era in human history. Yeah. And that's really incredible to watch where that's true. where everything is so tied into how Technology has either improved but our also lives. Technology is happening right in front of our face now, too. We are the generation that sees the manifestation of these technologies instantly in front mm -hmm. of our face. So, like, you go over a span of time, and they say that technology is tel telescoping that uh, 150,000 years ago to 100,000 years ago to that uh, basically humanity or that evolution as a species, the hominid it starts slowly condensing, that things are happening closer and closer together. The, right. the spans of industrial revolution, the spans of technological revolution, the spans of the new artificial intelligence uh, revolution that's going to happen, I think, in, in, in like months, years. Fucking not. <laughs> and this is, this is uh, this, we're not going to go into the politics thing, but again, happen, why I think know? that, I think that uh, getting out in front of uh, technology becomes a primary focus for the human species. I mean, Skynet All isn't, specs. isn't even that far out of reality anymore. <laughs> oh, it's, not only is it not already out of reality, I think that maybe we, they're working on Skynet if, right now. <laughs> no, I want, I want, I want to, I want to dial it back to the fact that it may already exist. And if it did, we wouldn't even fucking know if in 1997, when the world's market crashed or glitched and Google simultaneously existed in the same month that if there if an AI ever existed and it ended up to be Google and that Google became self-aware it would be able to basically ultimately time would be manipulated manipu able to be manipulated by that, mm. that that main function because it started oh man it created its own time loop basically that, that's a nuts idea but the and it's totally conspiracy and way out of the fucking realm of probably even possibility but is it i mean you know you gotta think of how much tolerance people are willing to to i guess put up with that new stuff too we're like now we're we have to interpret our rights you know through the constitution in an age where like that technology couldn't have even been thought of back then in the 1770s and 1780s like you know, we 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 look at it now, and we think that we have everything now. But we have to think about the time frame of when this stuff was actually, you know, was. That almost sounds like a Democrat argument. What? <laughs> They're always arguing that fucking that we could have never predicted the technologies of. Oh guns no no no! Nowadays. But that's not what I'm saying at all. No no no! Not. That's no. I would never but, make that argument. But that's a they terrible could argument. Make that argument off of your argument, which is. Your argument's my argument. But, uh, just but for the, the point that I was getting at, Mark, before you interjected on me again, it's is that. One, I swear. <laughs> 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 Ugh, made me lose my train of thought. Welcome oh, abstract yes. So, 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 yeah. So, um, so when they wrote the Constitution, Sorry. they had to Careful. interpret it things through their own time, but they were so aware of the future of the nation that they specifically used the types of words they use so that it would never be specific enough to to allow a government to basically erode our rights because it wasn't you know because it quote unquote was not in the constitution which is why the second amendment specifically says arms it doesn't say it doesn't say muskets or cannons it says arms because they knew in the future that technology would change and so everyone has the right to own as much as the government does because the government can never more. have more firepower than the you know than the public because then it's like a public more. assault yeah i was gonna say i want more firepower than the sense. fucking government. it's a public assault because why are they arming themselves like, like who are you arming you know against like the russians sure i can it's, see that but this isn't like you know 1960 anymore I love this conversation because you're you're <laughs> and, and and to put a point to what you're saying on the internet earlier i i I understand the, the the weighing of proof on uh, an, an impeachment and all of that stuff. This is where it becomes interesting to me because I think that the entire time they've been trying to argue 
about the government not having too much power mm -hmm. for the impeachment while they're using <laughs> power. Oh, the impeachment. The, I knew it, it was going to come Isn't it kind up. of ironic that they're trying to exercise their own strength of power to mm -hmm. put his power in check? So well, and it's so the forth. only time that they actually believe in checks and balances when the person who gets elected isn't from their political party. So go figure that none of this happened when Obama was in office for eight years. And when he did some pretty equally shady shit. And I've heard, I, I've heard people say that Obama like never did anything wrong in office. And no, it's like, are you true. that you know, blinded by your own partisan, you know, the argument can be made though, <laughs> regardless of whether he was, he was tried for it or not. He did wrong. And this president's doing wrong too. And they both done wrong and they both should have been impeached. Right. Yeah. And I, and I, and I you know people can stop doing the what if thing too, but and, and you know, on the same token, to to make my point is that you know, you know, for example, Trump is still extending a lot of the the warfare that we're seeing in the Middle East, and Obama, like, you know, Did the same exploded thing. that with all the the you know drone strikes, and like, you know, we should have never gotten involved in Syria, and you know, we shouldn't be stationed in many of those countries out there because. You know, we're we're trying to basically enforce our our beliefs and our traditions on, on other countries. World, no, <laughs> I don't think I you know Keep I, them all in check I, I don't think savages. it's That's I I don't I think it's right to force other com like other countries and other, you know and and their cultures and governments to conform to, to ours, our sure. ideals That's and that's wrong. True, man. I agree. I agree with that too. That's imperialism. It's exactly you know? what it is. Like it's what the, the entire much, it's but, it's what yeah. we seceded ourselves from the fucking Brit the the, the English because of that we right. didn't want imperialism we didn't want to be forced god can you imagine like it, like how they would see us now like we're a, a gigantic oligarchy now where everything is controlled by corporations they would they would they would assault our government so again fuck the corporations <laughs> this yeah. is my fuck the corporations so why are we trying to su suggest that they're private entities and that they have fucking rights that's your argument that i would like I to never Excuse me, I've never <laughs> said kidding. corporations had rights, I know, okay? I know, you didn't. I'm not but Mitt Romney, I... thanks a lot, okay? No. <laughs> You're much better than Mitt Romney. No, no. My, my thing individuals that... have rights. But no individuals own these companies. Jeff Bezos says no to Amazon anymore than it owns him. Well, people, you know, think that because Amazon is worth a trillion dollars that he must have a trillion dollars. No, no he's not. His, the, the amount of company stock that he owns has a certain value, that, but that doesn't so mean that he owns Amazon that much money. Out yeah. self, self -aware. That'd be insane, though, if he did own them. <laughs> oh my god. What if a yeah, but like, but, but like a lot of them give so much money away because like you could not never spend that much money in one lifetime. You'd have to, you would have to buy other countries to get rid of all that wealth, and that's just like, you know, could you imagine... Like, I, I, it's, you know, kind of a nightmare, but, like, I can imagine that our corporations would get so big, and, like, all the international corporations now, because so many countries have trade deals, and that, like, includes private companies, because, you know, companies have the right to trade with other, with, you know, with other, you know, uh, companies, and, 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 you know, it's just a part of the, the global, you know, trading uh, market, but I can see a problem with all the major corporations that are constantly buying up other companies and, and you know you know um, building their portfolios uh they're destroying america though Would i you not agree i worry that they're soaking up 30 percent of the entire economy all of it well let's go well, think about it all retail stores are gonna be gone in four years there are so many there are so many companies not dude not you even four so? years not even four years uh, no you're ahead of me dude. So, so i'm, so I'm trying to finish hold on i'm trying to finish my point I'm here sorry because you have ADD. to think about this for a minute. Great think help. about all the world's biggest corporations, and especially the ones that are that are, you know, that are, are uh, central to America. All of those companies combined have more GDP than I would say the next fifty to a hundred countries in this world. We could see a point where our corporatism would get so bad that you can see companies like Apple and Amazon actually buying company. Uh, uh, countries through their GDP by buying up all of their uh, like all their debt and owning yeah. that country's economy and then forcing them to work for that company. I I'm terrified of Forced that social. because indentured because servitude in the form of socialism. Up, that's no? not capitalism. That that's is not capitalism. No, that's corporatism so. because yeah. governments are in cahoots it's with all of these forced socialism in a way because they it take is their socialism and they force work on yeah no and and I think that that's the way things are going mm -hmm. and and you're right it gives capitalism a bad name because let's all be real here capitalism is the best form of I wouldn't have a smartphone if it wasn't for capitalism we, because the market says I want this. 
and I want that for features, and like I want to have an eight inch screen or whatever. Not just that, and, it's made it more competitive in price, right. and it's and it's the argument that I I always say about like rent against the UBI thing is that is that there's always going to be somebody there to undercut your costs as long as government doesn't step his fucking grindy hands in it. There's going to be somebody there to say you charge them way too much. I can make money and help them. You know, and that's the free market. It should continue to be that entrepreneurship thing. should be cultivated. Every and I'm and I'm worried. I love technology, and I, and I love that we've changed the way that people can make money in this economy. You know, the the but the the gig economy is kind of going away, and that's scary because all that's left is podcasts. You know, there's there's podcasts, and there's Musicians independent journalists, and and, and there's there's bands the and artists and economy. Is comedians crucial. are a huge source of of people's oh. viewpoints now, which is crazy. So this is this and this is always my thing when we talk and we argue about the UBI thing. It's not that I think that government should be giving us a handout, and I don't think that we should be relying on other people's money. Taxation is theft. Make no fucking mistake. Mm -hmm. But when we're taxation, we're taxing people individually, and we're taxing human beings. That's one thing. When you're taxing a unknown entity that is, or an own entity that is abstractly not human, and is creating wealth in untold amounts, in the form, and this is the argument in the form of a value-added tax. Nobody likes the word the, the word tax. No. And I don't think that tax is the right way to go about it, but taking harnessing gains that is being shifted from a new emerging organism, basically, right? I mean, because that's what AI is. I mean, it, Michael Crichton said in 2008, before he died, um, that the biggest concern should be the convergence of these three technologies. And back in 2001, he wrote a book about it called Prey. Um, and in this book... I think it's inevitable, though. I do think that's inevitable. I think, and that's why Luddites are fucking backwards. When when people like Lindsey Graham go, well, okay, automation's a problem. Let's just put a fucking wall in front of it. Like, no, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Well, and you're not going to stop it. It will break through painfully, if necessary, just like Ian Malcolm has said in Jurassic Park. <laughs> Another Michael Crichton reference. But no, I, I think the chaos theory becomes very relevant here because systems are made to s cycle and break. I was thinking about that. They're too. always chaos there theory. to cycle and break. And, and I think that we're in a break, but we need mm. to think around the corner. And I think that the argument for UBI, only for me, is that we can take money that's being wasted. We can put it in our hands directly, individual human beings, to subvert the control from the government from us because they don't want us to. Have but the libertarian rights. argument is that we would already have that, but you know, wealth and resources if they weren't taken from us in the first That's place. True. So, but by saying that, time. but by saying that we're still going to have the same rate of taxation and then have UBI on top of that, it doesn't make any sense. No, no, that's not the argument. The argument should be we should eliminate that taxation because taxation is theft, and we should make a negative income tax and give it to us because for too long, people like me and you and him have been taking the brunt well all of that money and all of our business is going right to the top and now i'm not saying the top like wealth tax doesn't work bernie sanders is fucking wrong i love bernie i do love bernie people don't like but i like bernie a lot i think he's a genuinely honest person i don't like a lot of his fans i they're, genuinely they're... disagree with him <laughs> but that's my thing it's like i think he's genuinely wrong <laughs> but he's been wrong for 40 years about something that I, i'm not gonna say he's wrong i say okay, i disagree with so him. the one so okay. so think that's about it point. so think about it not just like you know federally but think about it if if ubi was implemented in only our state you know yeah. if new hampshire said okay we're we're gonna abolish property taxes and we're just gonna have a ubi you couldn't do that in a, our state do UBI our state statewide. constitution says that we have to pay for education through property taxes so how do you pay for you know for our schools I, I and that's you make a valid point th that's, that's the why, argument that i have to deal with because you know like like i don't i don't believe be at a state level. i don't believe in the government controlling education in the first place so it's, like you have a a, a three-headed monster that that you have to try to slay cut its fucking heads off bro and and it's impossible to to so it's, like not though it's not impossible all we need to do is take the fucking control control is money and information period those two things economic value and resources and knowledge and that is what controls the world those convergence of the and if you take some of that and you give it to us the problem is is that knowledge is not dispersed evenly until just recently because of technology mm -hmm. um i think that that's changed the game big time well think about this to too not, not i mean i think he should be able to talk too because i talk a lot so <laughs> but i also like that that like you're willing to learn because him and i you know do this for almost for a living now yeah <laughs> pretty much but it's almost been a year i mean since 
the first time you were on. Yeah, yeah. it has been a long time. It's, I mean, I think it was being able to grow. Second or something like it, that. It yeah. was. It's yeah. really interesting to hear a lot about this stuff. Like, I have weird opinions on weird times, you know, about politics and stuff like that. But you remain well, open, though. Ultimately, I'm that's trying to it. keep it open and trying to keep it like. But so does he, and that's why, like, Absolutely. we have this conversation, and I feel like the the thing is, is we never get to do this. Yeah. Um, online is destroying; it's breaking down. Because I can't our, our look you in the eye and tell you that you're that you're a dumbass. Right. <laughs> that's the thing. It's good to have that. You gotta have that because yeah. it is what is keeping us on track. Right. I'm trying to explain to you, Mark, that your your preferred presidential candidate may be smart, but at the same time his ideas are not workable because again and this is the problem that i'm having as an independent or third party or or you know being a libertarian is that you you have to get the other 330 million people out of out of the out of the mindset that there's only black and white when it comes to politics there's only one way to vote in a in, 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 in a two-way race and we're trying to convince people that the reason why things are as bad as they are is because we are perpetuating this two-party duopoly system that is broken and that we're trying to to enter in the competition to give the voters an option to say we actually care about your freedom and your ability to make your choices for yourself whether that's economically or socially with with who you love and your own family and on your own property and it's it's so strange to me that when I run for office that I have to explain those values to people because they've never heard them before. That's insane that That's like it, nuts, like yeah. like in a country where the where the constitution was founded on on the philosophical doctrines of a a small, you know, restricted government and a free populace that people to have point. the mindset today that we have to only have authoritarian government to have structure in this culture and our society and that's so wrong and that's why i'm running for for state house again in new hampshire because in 2016 through 2018 i had a lot of work done and i had a lot of success but at the same time i didn't get to accomplish a lot of what i was trying to do and i have I, and you know i got really big ideas that i think a lot of people uh might be open to and i and but my main goal in running isn't isn't you know uh like like only to win but it's also to educate people on on other ideas that are out there like like all the ideas that are constantly being thrown in our face are terrible sure you have the the twitter mo the the, the twitter woke mob that constantly <laughs> cancels worse. people if they don't agree with them but that's yeah. such a prevalent part of culture now where like it infests everything yep. and in, yeah. and it gets if it, you it seeps it. into everything now but I, I argue only if you let it yeah. i think that you and I, we don't give a shit. I'm gonna say whatever the fuck I want. If yeah. I drop the wrong word, I'm gonna own it, and I have. I I've I gotten tired of, of uh, you know apologizing for you know for cussing, for instance. Don't like, apologize. Like as a political candidate, <laughs> because if Donald fucking Trump can be president, yeah. I can say whatever the fuck I want. Yeah. And also, Absolute I want to be real and honest, uh, yeah. w like with people, no matter what happens, because we are such in a culture of like like what else can can can, can happen yeah. now? Like yeah. it can't get any worse than this. So fuck. <laughs> It, right it's fucking wild. but i'm trying i'm trying so hard to actually educate people on like there's another way and that's yeah, what i'm no trying way. to to help usher in the next like the other way <laughs> so and, and that's and that's really amazing you know honestly that you know there's somebody to come in and just break it down for people and be like you know for somebody like me that doesn't know much about politics or yeah just, you know like i don't catch on or whatever a lot of people so catch on so can i give you an example today I'm not going to use you know use names, but uh, I went to an establishment uh, downtown Rochester where I live, and uh, um, you know one of the owners that well she's the cook now she used to be in another place, but yeah. she approached me and said hey can I, can I talk to you for a minute and she brought over one one of the kids who works for her he's 18 like the, like he just turned 18 and apparently uh, pardon me um there's a place that he works at right across the border in Maine. The owner of that place is trying to keep his check from him and, tell, and, and told him that he's not allowed back on the property again. This kid hasn't been paid, and everything that she's saying is illegal and wrong. And yeah. so I actually went out of my way to leave with him to go to this place to get his check because that's what he's owed. And they have no legal ground to keep him off the property there's no restraining order there's no trespass order there's none of that and they're just kind of being a dick to this kid for no you know yeah like for nothing so i was like um you're not gonna threaten him first of all and we were gonna go get his check and we get there and the place was closed but 
it's the principle of like yeah. you know somebody knows that i can possibly help with this situation i'm and i'm more than happy to do that i don't say this to blow up you know my profile or, or you know my own ego and it's no, the it's point important. that like that that but, but this important. is the exact work that i'm trying to do is that i've worked so hard to get people to understand where I'm coming from and now they come to me and they ask me to do these things because I know that I can help and that's all I've ever wanted. I've had, I've had, I've had people call me about, about property issues uh, when I was still in office. I've had people call me and say, what do I do about my son and his school? Like they, they won't do this, this and this with his IEP, blah, blah, blah. Like I was in the news, the, the lady from Rochester that, that was having a fight with, with the school because they, they wouldn't let him in the school because of his IEP and at stuff. The and end it's of like, the day. Fucking props for getting that fucking law. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you. Seriously. Oh, the uh, the one on stage right thing. Here. I get that all the time. Right I here. still get that As one. A performer, how many times <laughs> I fucking want to just have a beer on stage? Do you know I still get I, I still get shouts out for that. I I still right. do. Yeah, I still do to this day. Can't see it yeah. on the internet. We're we're, 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 we're wow. pounding knuckles. I can't even believe that I even awesome. had to put in a, a bill about that in the first place. But what I've tried to tell people is that like that and the huffing fucking. I I don't even want to get into that. <laughs> I love it. The the archaic law is fucking dying pink butter. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. I, I tried to... Uh, there's this, like, tradition in New Hampshire where we've been trying to repeal the no collecting seaweed at night law in New Hampshire, yeah. and, like, I even sponsored that. <laughs> I sponsored that bill. And the committee still kills a bill every time, you know, because, like, the... the the fish and game people will come in and say, "We need the seaweed for like the the environment or something." And it's like people can can go on the beach and take the seaweed and and like no they, they can steal it. And it's like, that. what no about one. during the day? Like, is it a like is it not? It's just it's, not okay at night. Like, it's stupid, you know. But like, we have these old laws on the books for nothing that aren't even being enforced. So let's let's go. Let's cite. Like, oh, hold on. Yeah. See, I was gonna say, let's go back to that because you're being arrested for picking up nature. Bananas <laughs> at <laughs> night, but not show? during the day. You remember Creep Show? It sounds like, familiar. You yeah. can only oh, the seaweed. Hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, I forgot can hold my breath for a long, long time. I forgot all about that. <laughs> you fucking brought it right back, dude. I totally I'll forgot about that. Done. I'll shoot you dead. Come with us. This guy. <laughs> <laughs> so they remade that, right? They're remaking it or remade it or something? Oh, Creep House? Creep, Creep Show? show? Creep House. I know. I, I, I can, like, see it in my mind, but I don't. I actually don't I think I've ever seen Black it. Black House from Stephen King. I, my brain goes on tangents every time. So, like, the minute you said that, I started thinking about Stephen King, and I thought about the talisman because I was thinking about the beach. And in Rye, <laughs> there's this part in the story where it's a, this is a whole thing in the talisman, and then that cycled the Black House, and then you said that. That's weird. That's... That's how my brain, my brain works on, it's, it's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. It's a daily, that's why I smoke pot. I'm not even Speaking sure of, <laughs> light it up. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, we don't do that. We're not, we're not, it, 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 we're not those people that uh, legally smoke marijuana on the air. Um, fuck, hey, to, this is to the FCC. <laughs> Eat a goddamn dick. So uh, part of my goal... Part of my goal as a legislature, when I um, a legislator, when I get elected again to the legislature, is, I, is what I wanted Sorry, to say. Brandon. It's okay. Um, <laughs> is uh, eat a dick, MCC. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. Welcome to abstract. <laughs> Shut up, Mark. I'm trying to say something. <laughs> so, speaking of marijuana, <laughs> part of part of my life's work in politics is to change the cannabis laws in New Hampshire because. Here, here. Um, I, I personally believe that it isn't the role of the state to dictate what people are allowed to smoke or drink. And I think that we've really got to get over ourselves as a society where we want to control that for people, like, you know, for consenting adults. Like, if I, yeah. you, know, you know, say, for instance, if, you know, if, if I wanted to go buy a pound of weed, like, like what's stopping me and, and why, you know? So, like, why are we telling people that... They're not allowed to to buy you a naturally occurring it. substance that is. You might go sell it. You might make money off it. No, we can't and track we, that. We money. can't tax it. Oh my god. That's it. We yeah, can't that's all it comes money, down to. And that's not okay. But with it's us. totally okay for the state to have a monopoly on liquor, <laughs> <laughs> where where no right private when... company can sell alcohol <laughs> in the entire state. That totally. Oh, and you can buy it off the state highways. You're gonna that win... makes total sense. You're winning a lot of friends with the state liquor fucking lobby, man. Oh, you know what? They're my biggest enemy in government. I bet. 
that. In this state of New Hampshire, good. like good. I hate the liquor commission and more than I any other in agency. Rochester, I'd fucking vote for you in a heartbeat. I hate the liquor commission solely on a God. I wish I. I this is the only time. I, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. This is the only time I <laughs> wished I lived in Rochester so I could fucking vote for you. It, it's, it's, seriously, I, I I never say this because fuck Rochester. No offense, but I hate it because it, you know I what? Have some bad. Memories. It's an up and coming town. It's 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 a love hate place for yeah. me. Obviously, I've, I you grew know up why. there. I I I tried to leave, and it's it's just home to me now. You so know, I um I uh, I left, and you know, because we 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 grew up there together. I yep. spent my formative years there. I met you because because you made fun of me specifically for wearing an Offspring t shirt. That was like that one was time no, I that was the that with Ray. dude. That was the first time we met, and that 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 sunk in? that first impression will never leave what? me because Why? you gave me shit for wearing dude, an. But how? but it was a t shirt from a, from an actual good dude, album like though. My favorite band. <laughs> That's the worst thing. That's why I still don't understand why I made. Because you called me the Offspring Kid, and I'm like, I wore that shirt once around you. So here's the thing. This once. I I I I, I argue. That I don't even have that shirt I anymore. I argue that you think I was making fun of you. In reality, I probably just said that because I liked Offspring. The you were that, or kid. you didn't know what my name was, and that's what you knew or me I'm by. Was Offspring Kid? Oh, that's definitely it. <laughs> I had ADD. I don't remember anything. Yeah. You getting weed? <laughs> 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 Ironically, but that's the funny thing about it is because I I was like I dude that was the first band I ever saw live. Do you know that? Really? Offspring. I've mm -hmm. never seen them live. Uh, so the, I on my, on my 16th birthday, my dad took me because I had tickets. My friend Dexter Brian fucking gave me these tickets because he um, couldn't go. Um, it was on my birthday on December 13th. And it was the weirdest fucking lineup. So they weren't the first band that I ever saw. They're the third band I ever saw. The first band I ever saw was MXPX. Oh my god, I remember them. So it was MXPX. You know the the the, 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 the they're a Christian band. They're a Christian band. Yeah. that's so funny. Yep. It, 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 Christian <laughs> and, punk and they're band. so big. Yeah. And I'm like, the fuck are they doing here? Because it was MXPX. That's an oxymoron, Christian punk. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> anyway, yeah, a little, we won't get into that. No, <laughs> I'm really religious for another, an, an, yeah, another day. I don't care if we lose you. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> uh, the second one on the list was Cypress Hill. It was MXPX. Yeah. Cypress Hill. It fucking. Offspring. That is a, a very. You Odd. imagine the mix of people that went to this show? It was Good the Lord. coolest show ever. I bet there was weed was, everywhere. I, I smoked <laughs> so much fucking weed when I was sixteen at that show on my birthday. Oh my god! And my dad was so cool about it. My dad brought me there, and he was like, "Happy birthday, son!" Gave me two joints. I loved him so much. That's for so it. funny. I love him so much till this day. God rest his soul. Him and my mom. And I feel so guilty because I was so like, leave me alone. I'm trying to be cool with my friends, dad. Like, yeah. he gave me fucking weed to go to the show. Right? And they were like, here, we bought <laughs> you a t-shirt from the show. And I'm like, stop, you're embarrassing me. You know, like, <laughs> I was such a, and I should have been embarrassed because I was still a little shit. I was a fucking little douchebag, little shit with blue hair. Fucking, I should have been fucking yeah. embarrassed. I used to call. I used to call my hair too. They were awesome for that, and I never experience. You never experience it when you're in the moment, and now I regret it because I love them so much, and they're gone. Yeah. And they just wanted to make sure that my birthday was awesome, and I was just kind of a little fucking cunt about it. And now <laughs> I look back at it, and I kind of fucking it, it makes me hate myself a little bit. But I love them for doing it, and I always remember that as being the best fucking experience of my life mm. uh, when I was like. Yeah, that at that age, sixteenth birthday. What topic were we on before we talked about this? I want to. I wanted to get back to our original point, and I forgot up. what we were. <laughs> this is why it's Something called abstract transmission. That's folks. exactly right. That's right. Because we we, it's you know what bullet points and arguments are never good. Um, I I got some water thinking. <laughs> like bullet points and and talking points. It was funny because I just watched Bill Maher on on Joe Rogan recently, <sighs> and I thought it was really good in conversation i can't get in i i try but like sometimes it's like he's the most arrogant prick i've ever seen on television oh bill maher oh my yeah, god dude. but it was cool to see him and joe rogan back and forth because he's i don't think Ooh. he's i think he's got wait he, he was on uh the, uh, the rogan podcast oh, no yeah. way really good oh my I god you're gonna love both this. alpha male personalities going at it dude oh my or, or type a personality is what would, i meant to say not you'd be alpha surprised male, sorry. how smooth it went I, really I, I thought that it was going to be like kind of well you know why it's because they they're both kind of on the left. Right, look, well, Joe is is ooh, hard to read here, at times because his stand-up comedy is 
Amazing. Amazing. Because he rips Joe on Rogan's everybody. Yeah. On everybody. Okay, but like so, in a perfect way. But so like I'm I know that he's kind of still on the left. I'm gonna no, I'm gonna He's be a cr- Bernie fan now. No. Yes, no, he is. He no, just said he was. I know. And I'm gonna argue this, and this is gonna get I'm gonna get some heat for this probably, but fuck it. If it gets us more likes, we'll fucking be shameless about it. <laughs> fuck you, Joe Rogan, in the aspect hey, that you wow. shift oh, boy. a little bit. He does. He go with his guest, and I do the same thing, so fuck me too. I love so it. you're saying that that he believes in respectability politics, where he wants to find well, common ground with his guests, so that he's a more well-rounded individual. I think that that's exactly what he's doing, and I think that's perfectly spoken. And I think. But you just said fuck you, Joe Rogan. I was just kidding. I don't fuck. fuck dude, you, he's, he's got the you most. You should be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> yeah. No. I have I, you seen Joe fight? Because I would never fight Joe Rogan, dude. Um, I wouldn't well, fight anybody. <laughs> Have you seen his Not the anymore. snips of his Not doing anymore. his kickboxing dude, in the gym, dude? The guy would kill me. Oh my god, <laughs> he, he could kill me with a finger, dude. I fucking. I, I still know, remember him for Fear Factory though. That but, show was so funny. You no, know, it sounds listen, like a fucking gunshot. It does. You gotta pull up a Joe, clip somehow. Joe, Joe yeah. Rogan is a fucking awesome fucking host, but I really argue that uh, he shifts based on. I I know I I think that it's a little bit more than what you said. I think that he shifts. Based on he did it. He, he didn't do that for Larry Sharp the, though. The back and forth until he's like, like with what was that guy Adam from Adam from Adam ruins everything. That oh yeah, got, that got uncomfortable. Wait, that has music. Oh, it has music on it. Yeah. Sounds like fucking Tong Po and kickboxer. Really? I don't know how he doesn't hurt his knee because he because he locks his his legs straight like that like when he kicks. I don't know how he doesn't like hyperextend his knee doing that, but I. I'm watching him do it. A dude can kick a hole through my stomach. Here we go. He, you find it? Was that his leg? Yeah. Yeah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh. I'm telling you, this that is, would hurt so bad. This is so weird. It, no, it wouldn't hurt. It would fucking kill you. <laughs> okay? It would break your fucking rib cage with one kick. Yeah. That That's it death. It sounds like the Tong Po thing. Remember Kickboxer? <laughs> Was it kickboxing? Like, the only reason the people that he fights don't die is because they're also opponents that are capable of fighting him. Like, <laughs> he doesn't fight, though, and I and I kind of wish he would. I'm almost wondering if he, if he thinks he's too old now. He's got to be in his, like, mid-40s probably, now. He has zero... I think... A I phenomenal think, shape. I think, I think I've heard <laughs> this, and I don't listen to a ton of... I've, I've listened to maybe 35 Rogan podcasts in total, and that's it. Um, most of my Rogan... Ex- it, 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 information is just from those 35 podcasts and his comedy and anything I've read about him um, but the thing that I find fascinating is that he doesn't seem like he has anything to prove to anybody and no. he doesn't really want to he, he feels that fighting is, is kind of a like a, a very you know very holy kind of thing you know what I mean it's very personal and very uh, and I can I can respect that because I have oh yeah 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 has is that uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme yeah. I used to love his movies now, like, I could he, he, hold my own in a fight he was now, real... but I fucking... Well, we lived on Lafayette Street, man. <laughs> like, I got in fights. I fucking fought people. I stabbed a kid in the leg with a fucking resin-covered screwdriver because I fucking... Are you telling me that I fucking... A tiny little fucking mini resin scraper screwdriver. Like, I had this little mini fucking, like, electronics, like, screwdriver thing and I had in my pocket and had nothing else and these kids jumped me for fucking what they thought was weed but was just a bunch of resin and a fucking cellophane. And, uh, I take that... I took that fucking thing out of my pocket. They ripped my fucking trench coat. Uh, People still wear trench coats. 1999 of me uh, wearing a trench Imagine, coat because like, of the, the trench coat time. mafia was a thing and everybody's rebelling against. I should be able to wear my trench coat. Fuck you. Like, <laughs> and that was true. I was a libertarian before. It was cool. Well, so, you know, like, Columbine, they, they ruined that. Well, that Thanks was a lot. Well, that's what I'm saying. The trench coat mafia. Well, I was in school, in high school, during this this time when this was a thing. I remember and, when the know, kids like, wore trench coats. I never had one. They're like, no. I <laughs> had the trench coat. You, oh. Yeah, I did. I had an eighth grade. Oh, in, dude, both uh, of us had one. And then, uh, I had one because you had one. Um, well. That's how lame I, I was. Stop wearing my trench coat. Justin had a, a trench coat. I had a trench coat. Yeah, well, hey. Dude, it's good times. Yeah. I also threw a fucking Molotov cocktail through someone's fucking window, so. (laughs) 
Hey, an cookbook. <laughs> yeah, what? it was. It, nobody lived there. I've I mean, never actually was, read that. To be but honest. it was a personal property, and I yeah, fucking. It actually didn't burn the place down. Luckily, it fucking. It was a trailer too. How the fuck that happened? I have no idea. Went through the window, blew up inside the trailer. Everything caught fire. And it went out. <laughs> And it didn't catch fire. Dude, those things go up in 30 seconds, the whole fucking thing. So it was like the fact that I didn't get fucking charged with anything for that. And I mean, granted, it was a friend's personal property, and I ended up getting a little bit of trouble for it, but whatever. Oh, I also we... learned about styrofoam and gasoline. And yeah. if you don't know, we're all about free information here. So if you put styrofoam and gasoline long all enough, up. you just keep on putting styrofoam and gasoline, it'll melt it. So can we can we talk about something real quick? It's can we just you. talk about how the music world has lost some absolute legends lately? We can, but before so, we do that, so we don't get stormed by FBI, I <laughs> have the right to give that information on the air because the government has it and we are free from the government in the aspect that we should also have the rights to make homemade napalm. But I don't do that ever because I'm a responsible parent. <laughs> That was when I was a young kid and had the anarchist cookbook downloaded on a PDF. I was so scared about it. I read a, I watched a documentary about that on Netflix, and oh the guy God. that wrote it yeah. said he didn't want anything to do with it anymore. Like, he didn't believe in any of that. Yeah. That's a dude that... Like, well, I bought into it wholesale. <laughs> when I was 16, I bought into it fucking wholesale. Oh, I, I fucking believe it. I thought it was the best <laughs> shit in the world. I fucking have an anarchy tattoo on my fucking arm and now I'm voting for a presidential candidate on the left. <laughs> 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 what a fucking hypocrite I've become. <laughs> oh, I don't think great. any of us are the same person we were when we were 18 and now that we're in our 30s. You I mean, know? that the fucking truth, man. Uh, so we lost Sean Reinert. Um, uh, Reinert. Rain, that, Reinert. Um, I think I'm saying it wrong. I'm sorry. He used to play for... He was the drummer in Cynic. Cynic and... Uh, and Death, death yeah. He also played in Death He was a very uh, Innovative musician and, and you know Cynic The the Focus album Came out in 1993 And that pretty much Changed the game For a lot of Progressive uh, Metal uh, All the, the Death metal stuff Like his style Was yeah. so unique And like uh, We still don't know What happened He was only 48 I mean they I mean he could have Played another 10 years You know But I don't know what's, I'm not sure what happened I guess they found him. They like he wasn't conscious in his house, and they they couldn't they couldn't bring him back. So I, it's just been a, a strange year already for for celebrity deaths. And and honestly, like I was talking to this, I I I, I forgot who I was talking to about this, but like I'm actually kind of bummed out that like you know I'm at the age where I know that most, if not all, of my heroes are gonna die in my lifetime. I'm gonna have to watch all of them die as I get older, and that is that is so watch Peter Steele heartbreaking. That, Peter that's... Steele died. We lost Neil Peart, and that hurt yeah. so much because holy crap, he was the best rock drummer of all time. Yeah, absolutely. We lost. We've lost so many. Jesus Christ, oh. we had to watch fucking Dimebag go. Like, like we on tape. Like we had to get. We had to see what it was like on the internet. To I'm never gonna forget that tape either. I remember watching that with you, man. Literally, that like was, you said, weird. watch our heroes die. Literally like, die. What? Literally watch being it. murdered. Actually, yeah. That's yeah, fucked. Like, We've how lost many so generations had to actually watch that shit? Like, yeah. they, nobody watched Jimi Hendrix die. No. Nope. You know what I mean? Nobody fucking, even That's Kurt, fucking nobody great. watched him die. Like, nobody fucking watched these musicians Oof. die. Like, we watched it on fucking tape. And then, and, and we're that, that, that generation that goes on, like, okay, we can do it. Like, we, <laughs> we, we literally watch people burn alive in fucking cars online. Like, we do, we are that culture now. I, I, we don't mean to gonna, laugh, but it just sounds so ridiculous. Video, but yeah, right. Everybody's seen people burn alive. I've in the seen the ISIS videos too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how. I, I don't remember how I saw the, that. But just, I know how you saw horrifying. it because it's the fucking internet. <laughs> because you're curious and you're a human being, and that's what human existence is about: is asking questions. I've and if seen, they're fucking hard questions, sometimes you still have to ask those fucking questions. So I have a, a quick story i want to talk about that i'm gonna go back to another thing yeah. because i i think it's Sorry. important to talk about this but sure. um one uh documentary on netflix that i that i will tell people to watch very carefully is is uh it's uh 10 of 9 um yeah. is called don't fuck with cats yeah and it's the story about a guy named luca magnata um i don't remember what country he was from but um so what happened was there was this guy who was uploading videos on the internet of him killing animals. And 
one of the videos that went viral was um, he put he put three kittens into a vacuum seal bag and and vacuum the air out, and that's fucking horrible. And some people got so upset at this video that they that they they basically conducted this international manhunt, and it is. It, dude, you couldn't have written the script on this movie. Like, this person is an absolutely real person, and the way that he talks, it it is it is bizarre. Like, it's almost like he's not a real human being. And they finally caught the guy, and and it's just it was just a bizarre story. But you know, if you want to watch that, and you want to watch someone, you know, a fucking go to prison for something that they did wrong based on posting on the internet then watch it but i'm telling you man this stuff will stay with you psyche you know it's it's really hard to watch because our natural instinct is to protect innocent life including animals and when someone intentionally goes out of their way to harm that that is just disgusting behavior and like but the the but but the point i wanted to make like well 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 well, to go back to the the, the, the technology argument that we're talking about earlier is that that makes me sound bad in 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 spite, in spite of how much intrusion happens into our private lives, like people are stupid enough to post a video on that with their face on it, so that <laughs> other people say, "Hey, sorry, you're an asshole for doing that. Hilarious. We're gonna make sure you go to prison for it, fucking and then good. actually do it." Good, thank you, the internet. Because yeah, it's no, I'm not crazy. kidding, dude. I, dude, I think that's kind of fucking great. The though, most amazing the part of it is the people that are involved in like the research are just regular people. And they make the cops look like clowns, dude. These mm-hmm. people are amazing at their their uh, detective skills. It's it's worth it. it's worth the watch for that alone because they are just Proves so hell bent on getting shit, rid of this man. guy off the street because of what he did to these animals. It's it's horrible. But where did this guy live? But like, oh, okay. So I won't spoil it for you. But the, but the one thing I will say is that he progresses, and this is why they went. This is why they went after him because he he progressed, and that's all I'm gonna say. They always do, so especially to that extent. What is this? It's called "Don't Fuck with Cats" on I'm, Netflix. I'm, I'm gonna definitely. You watch have this. to watch it, dude. It's so the most bizarre is, thing I've ever seen. Thing. I haven't I seen it yet, so I. They don't show you like what, what happens, but okay. I mean, like like you see parts of it, and then you get the idea because yeah. you can hear it. Yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah. 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 But, but they don't show you because that would be horrible. <laughs> What it though? I mean, it's. it's really I'm sorry. What? I, look, man. I I don't think that it's any worse. I don't than think I could watch it. I, I don't. I can already imagine. I don't need. To, I I already know what happens. I don't. I don't need to actually need see to it actually happen. See it. I just don't think there's any difference for me than that versus the fucking what happens in fucking everywhere with fucking animals that we consume. I just don't see the difference. That's my problem. Is that it's, it's? I don't have a problem with veganism. I have a problem with political veganism. Oh, me too. Because because <laughs> you when you make buddy. it yeah. like when you make your personality and your lifestyle a a, else's a political cause, yeah. you take all of the meaning out of it for me. Yeah. And I can't get behind you a try movement. Force somebody else to do what you're doing. Right. You, it's okay. That's to called ex- solipsism. By so, the way. listen. I think that it's okay to express your concerns with the system. Mm-hmm. This is wrong from a consumer standpoint. We're wasting things. We're wasting <laughs> lives. We're breaking things down in mm-hmm. a necessary fashion. Because what we do to animals is horrific. Uh, and, we, and those people are given paychecks, right? Mm-hmm. But this guy, he's fucking wrong too. But how many people just, they find the job that they can do that in because they need to do that. Well, how many people just live that life? I'm not saying everybody. And I don't want to come off this way because I I grew up around me. I've killed animals. I've fucking consumed them. I've got fucking deer before. I fucking know what it's like to fucking kill an animal and take its life and then eat it. But I think the concern that I have is that we disconnect ourselves from it by putting in packaging and all that stuff. And it becomes a profit over over suffering uh, value. And that's the thing. Money versus suffering and the money always wins and it, it really for me becomes well then people like this guy end up in positions where it's cool to just fucking kill animals all day and they get paid for it but they're like look i need to do this this is or else i'm gonna end up fucking like ted bundy like i'm gonna and they, and how many people they just stave off the fucking Stave off the demons, man. Stave off the fucking voices. Stave off the whatever they need to do. And they make the picture book art at home with fucking cut up magazines. And they kill the animals in the free time. And they live somewhere in fucking wherever USA. And and they go by and they never kill anybody. They only kill the animals. 
But how close were they? How many times? I forgot this statistic, but uh, I read somewhere that like you're some something percent uh, likely to walk past a serial killer at some point in your life. Absolutely. And that's that's also terrifying. Did you that, uh, the one with that serial killer calls in on uh, Howard Stern, and he's like, I just, "I'm gonna." He, this guy was real deal. I have no just hearing him speak you're like yeah he killed people and he he's he needs to get it off of his chest and part of it is is he needs to get off his chest because he's fucking broken by it part of it's i want the whole world to know about it like so he's got this duality right where part of him feels horrible about it if you if you ever read the dark tower uh by stephen king in it there's a blaine the mono which is a monorail it's an ai character or whatever uh that has like this duality anyway the thing that uh really gets me in this is that this is like dynamic between two like feeling bad about something and feeling like there's no other option i have to do this it's a compulsion and and you know can compulsions are human nature right especially when it comes to so th- the urge to kill people <laughs> i can't so imagine what that feels like when you start to go on the line of progressivism the argument goes that eventually everything's acceptable in progressivism if you this is the conservative argument i like arguing the conservative argument because well, it's not usually my argument but the argument here is that if you let things go long enough it starts with gay sex it ends with dead pigeons. You know, like people are marrying <laughs> animals, and no, 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 they're not. No, I agree it's with not you. Happening anywhere? I agree with you. But the argument is, is that eventually <laughs> it'll get there. I would never. Argue no, it that. first I'm, started where we don't sexual myself, so I fucking would not argue that ever. But I think that that's the argument they're going with most of the time. The so. argument started from they didn't. They they're didn't, gonna fuck pancakes pretty soon. They didn't want black pancakes people. Won't be safe. They didn't want black people to be able to 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 drink at the same water fountain, and then it turned into now we hate the gays, and so they never have a consistent position to where they look like the <laughs> like the good guys. And that's why. I could never be a conservative because there that entire political platform is based on like I only accept things if they convert, you know, the, if they conform to my worldview or yeah. other people are willing to conform to what I believe in to make m- them look more acceptable to me and I not can't willing. I don't They're believe in that. <laughs> I don't like, believe in that. Yeah, no, not only are they going to, but we're going to make them <laughs> or 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 go to prison and and that's like the argument as to like for one, why do we still have somebody laws in 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 yeah. some states? And the two, sodomy. why is sodomy? It's just like, dude, really? Because they argue anything that's not like vanilla missionary sex is considered sodomy in some fucking states. Still, we still have sodomy laws in America, <laughs> and and marijuana is still illegal. In in those two issues, uh, state this one we live here in New Hampshire, yeah. and it's illegal. <laughs> there, it, it's it's not illegal. It's, that's where it's, you come in, buddy. <laughs> it's decriminalized up to an ounce because that happened as I was in office. Um, it decrim, but they can still fucking slap you with a fine and get money out of you, right? Well, the cops would still have to enforce it. And honestly, like a lot of police departments, even in New Hampshire, are like, to. I would rather not waste my time. Some of them are gung ho and they're like, yo, we're going to get these weed smokers yeah, off I the street. See, but look, like, all right, sorry, <laughs> heat on the Rochester. <laughs> But I, smoke, I've like, talked. This is a tough. I've th- talked to the Rochester police chief, and I this asked straight up. And I asked straight, straight up. I was like, "Are you willing to not make marijuana a priority for your, you know, for your police department?" And and he 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 said yes. They, they got you know because they got bigger fish to fry in Rochester. There's all kinds of property, you know, uh, you know. There's property based crimes. All the addicts everywhere. Our, mm-hmm. our homeless problem is, is is you know is absurd. So it's like. Yeah. I mean, why are they going to focus on some guy who's just trying to, you know, smoke a bowl as to the guy who's shooting up in the middle of the street and, you know, could potentially hurt himself or others? And it's like, you know, they can't focus on that. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm honestly hoping that we get to a point in, 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 like, um, in society where even if it's federally illegal that, like, you know, police departments just won't enforce it. So right. it's one of those things where, like, old archaic laws are still on the books, but nobody enforces them because sure. they, they've moved past the expectations of that of uh, you know that particular society but it's a yeah. problem where bio- bu- bureaucracy fails and it just shouldn't exist to begin with so and this is where i think the argument again keeps on coming in and i don't want to bring it back but i do want to get it before you're you know before we're out of this is is ubi and the aspect that homelessness is a huge problem right mm-hmm. how much money could be generated into just rochester alone if each individual had 18 18 18 or older only american citizens 
This is another benefit. It doesn't go to illegal immigrants. It only goes to me and you because well, that was never I, that was never an argument that I considered. Yeah. I know I know it's part of it, but it is a, a great argument for conservatives out there. You guys listening? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> that the uh, is that we're taking the money from government. It's it, it shifted tax money from us for how long? Now it's time to take that money and put it back into our pocket so we can spend it in May Street and rebuild our economy with fucking jobs like podcasts and fucking artists well, and your band. You know what I mean? They, I just feel like welfare programs can go fuck themselves. Latoya and her fucking 12 children, God, that sounds racist, can fuck themselves. I'm sorry, you can fucking take that money and divide it. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. That's who I was thinking of. Does too. she have twelve kids? No, but they probably live off yeah. fucking welfare programs because I fucking hate Latoya Jackson. Latoya, I, I mean, she's a Jackson, so she's probably wealthy. No. Anyway, she's no, a Jackson. she's not. Okay, well, I wasn't well. talking about Latoya Jackson. I was literally being fucking completely irresponsibly racist there. So what I'm saying is, is that fucking pe people. <laughs> I don't give a shit. I really don't fucking care. The point that I'm making is that there's a pl plenty of people all around the country, white or black, that use these programs to fucking make fucking tax and rebates at the end of the year and make a ton of money off of fucking food stamp programs and divert a bunch of money while people are getting paid 40, 50, 60, 80 thousand dollars a year to work in paper pushing fucking bureaucracy when that money could just go to us individually, solve the problems in black and white communities and really annihilate poverty. Right, it it, it, it create a though. foundation that we could be artists and creators and not fucking slaves to GDP, which isn't, by the way, outdated fucking measurement that doesn't ac account for people who need to stay at home with their fucking autistic kids and so on and so forth. So I agree with you that when we say that taxation is theft, but who are we taking the money from, right? This so I know we're talking about Andrew Yang because he's the only one pushing that idea. So I I will use. Yang is yeah, the, as the I face mean, of it are, for now. That's who I'm suggesting. Right, that I know that it, I know it's not his original idea. He's just aping it for right. his you know campaign. But the issue comes down to again, like this person is running for president. You know, to one to one branch of our you know you know, you know American federal government. So he has a responsibility to the Constitution. Yeah, and there are some parts of his campaign where it's like, okay, like cool, you're bringing up intelligent ideas that, that people can you know can can come around on my issue comes to purely just economics i know that he's terrible on guns as well Yo, and, that's and one thing we agree on i'm not a fan of his gun stance that's why I, I i could never but I support think it's not a priority for him i so can I, I can never support a candidate for any office or or any current elected official that believes in infringing upon the constitutional rights that that they swore to uphold i don't think that he's in on it. He, I think he's suggesting that we reevaluate how we look at gun control, and that maybe technology could, and that maybe us never together. implementing it because gun, all gun control is unconstitutional. Anyway, yeah, I, I can agree. I get back to my original point? I think point? he also agrees, <laughs> though. If you hey, reevaluate, the, the means is, I want to come up with you, some scheme to if you read on your rights. It, you'd find that I think he agrees with you in that aspect. That. There's, it's not going to go anywhere. So let's make some good ideas. And yeah, then but, but gun control has proven not to work. So why put more of it in place? You're you're just what, he's you not know, suggesting what, the optics. It's not a yeah. He's going to win as a Democrat. Fucking of course. He's not. He's a chess player, man. But it's not enough, you know, for someone to just say we should just pass a red flag law and that's going to solve the problem. No, it's going to make everything worse. I don't think he's suggesting that. I think he's no, but there, the there are people of that. that are in his party. That's part of their their campaign platform. And he's trying to eliminate that, and that's the thing. He's not a traditional Democrat, and why I, I didn't get to him. finish my other point about UBI because no, you are so like fervent <laughs> on interrupting me. I am. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm your guest, after all, right? I, I just talk a lot. You in get general. to talk over him any other, like, like any other week. But today it's my turn. It's, it's you know, you just, you just sit there and be quiet. I, I, I'm just I, kidding. No, no, no. It's <laughs> my okay. God, you make you ever imagine if I went on, you know, someone's show and I said, "This is my time. You shut the fuck up." That's I would never do that. No, that's technically how it is. That's it's really he's he's not wrong. No. If I had a GIF, I'd fucking put that in right now. He's not wrong. A uh, what? <laughs> it's pronounced GIF. No, it's GIF. Yeah, it's GIF. I promise you, it's GIF. I call it Jeff. It's peanut butter. <sighs> yep. Mark. It's peanut butter. Anyway. All right. So my issue. I know it's GIF. I know <laughs> graphics. I know. My issue with, with with UBI is that, again, like, unless unless he says we'd have to eliminate most 
you know, federal departments and agencies, all the alphabets, okay, you would have to eliminate all taxes on all income. That's kind of the goal. So, well, well, we'll I'm not we'll saying that this that. is, hold on, I, I, so yeah. I'm actually trying to make an argument for my argument. So, yeah. my problem, so I was, you know, so I'm going to say UBI is again, like everybody getting free money because they exist. They exist because they have the gold star. In the United States, cool. no, no, but, no. no. <laughs> because they exist in the richest, fucking, most vibrant, supposed country of the entire world, where all of the money is fucking basically held by the national debt. You know, twenty three trillion dollars now, but that's okay. The, we have that. We could just Amazon could just pay it all off. They literally Amazon, could just pay it all off. No, they couldn't. They could. They could. How you know they fucking could. Pay it off if they could. <laughs> they just. Say if Amazon was my. They just business. write a check to twenty trillion dollar check to China. <laughs> It's not even to China. It's, the, it's the Federal I'm, Reserve, I, I actually, because the Federal is they're not they're like an actual are. government agency. They're a private they're just corporation, a, they're they're a shadowy, f- you know, like they're Illuminati federal type shit. Federal but, Express, <laughs> Street Fighter. Yeah. They get jumping out at you. But the federal the Express point that federal. I want to make in contrast to, to you know to UBI is that if you did you know what I was saying is if someone gets elected to office, you'd have to still convince Congress that. You know, getting rid of a lot of the alphabet agencies is a good idea. That you would have to eliminate the Sixteenth Amendment, uh, which is the is the taxation of of income. Um, you, d- d- there are so many things that you could do that you could do outside of UBI to to support what you're trying to argue for. The issue is like you're still putting the government in charge of that system. And that's something I could never get. I I, I I can't stand by that. I understand what you're saying. I can't stand by yeah. that. No, you're I, right. I, I, like, like unless we live in a voluntarist, unless we live in a completely voluntarist, um, you know, society where all transactions are 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 not impeded upon by any governing force. I can't stand by a person or an idea that says I want to put the state in control of my freedom. And that's what it comes down to: is how much control to the state am i willing to relinquish my rights and i'm not re- i'm not willing to relinquish any of them i don't think that would change and that's why i'm i'm you know i'm i'm, you know, I'm a big fan of, of edward snowden is because he shed the biggest light on our federal government's corruption that we've ever seen in the history of our country and yet he's being yeah. called a traitor right that's crazy to me that that we live in in arguably the, the freest society known to man in all of history and he's still in prison right no, he's he's uh, he's still on asylum in, in Moscow, I think. Moscow, okay. Yeah, so I I've been reading his book and I'm almost finished with it. I can't you know believe record, what he came up with. Book. It's it's an incredible book because he was literally a normal guy who had no inclination of ever doing what he did to expose the, the crimes of our federal government. But like he's I patriot. could never say you, you, if you saw yeah, something like that. Like, Wouldn't you do something? Yeah. And Absolutely. Yeah. On, on the flip side, why would I want someone to get elected to an office where they want to have our federal government be in control of giving me money or being in control of my life in any way? So you know? the argument is they already do. They already take your money, right? Right, and I'm arguing that we they shouldn't, shouldn't elect but a how, person that wants to keep doing that. No, I, nobody's <laughs> suggesting he does, though. He would have to no, to make your wouldn't. plan work. No, he wouldn't. You, you're suggesting he takes out a federal income our taxes? No, he's suggesting he uses VAT tax and only taking it off of the harnesses of AI gains. Um, so taxing robot labor only, not so, human being labor. Still works within the a, a private. I'm, yes, I'm, you're I'm, right. I'm, I'm so the Fed, it would be no, no, you're not. You make a valid point. <laughs> and the libertarian argument is that the federal government still has to intervene and do this. But what does the federal government do? Uh, that's not the libertarian Good. argument at all. We don't argue for, for state intervention. No, no, you're arguing. No, no. no. Yeah. Exactly that's not what I said. Well, what, that, that may be what I said, but not what I meant. <laughs> okay. Uh, is that the federal government? Um, they're not arguing that the federal government should be doing these things. They're arguing that they shouldn't be doing these. They shouldn't be involved at all. That the I've never heard anybody in the Democratic Party say that that we should abolish the income tax. Nobody. Never heard anyone say that no, once. Nobody, but that's what you would have to do to make your plan work. suggesting that, that it should happen. And even fucking uh, Yang is not suggesting that you abolish the Federal Reserve. So I asked him in person because I wanted to ask, do you think we should suggest that you suggest the uh, that we abolish the Federal Reserve? Reserve, um, and that basically the it came down to no. I mean, he doesn't think that the Federal Reserve should exist, but he doesn't think that we should end it overnight. 
and that you can't do anything. Why? Over. Because, because you can't. They they're uh, dude. Are you serious? They're You're the ones. They are the ones manipulating, uh, you know, our currency by by charging the bloating an it, imaginary interest rate that they came up with out of nowhere. Okay. All of our money is based on nothing. We True. came off the gold standard in yep. the early seventies. All of those things. So are valid. all of our money is based Ron on Paul debt. Is right, but yep. that doesn't validate what are we gonna fucking do about it overnight. You're going to end the Federal Reserve overnight? Literally not overnight, but I'm saying, why isn't anybody challenging is their power? exactly what he's doing. He's suggesting that we slowly, incrementally eliminate the Federal Reserve by giving money back to me and you, a negative income tax. Unless you pay $1,000 a month in, fed, in, in taxes yearly, then it's a negative income tax. It's simple math. If you get $1,000 a month and you're not paying $1,000 a month in taxes, you're getting a net gain, Right. But the so, point is, why are the are are are, are the, the taxes still being taken for other people to, to get your money? Point earlier that for years we've been taxed. That's still re. It's not uh, redistribution. Yes, it is. That's like Do, the definition re, re, of it. No, it's not. Socialism and redistribution is reconverting the means of control to government. So victory brand cigarettes, victory brand coffee, i.e. 1984. But that's not what we're doing here. We're taking money that's going to Amazon, who paid nothing in billions of debt, uh, $20 billion in, 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 uh, in profit. They paid zero in income taxes, zero in theft, rather. Mm -hmm. I don't give a shit about theft from Amazon. You know why? Because they're not a person. They're not a human being, and they might even just be a fucking AI entity, for all you know and all I know. They could be controlled by some fucking artificially intelligent existing creature that's already been here from 1997. <laughs> Dude, but, but Crazy they idea, employ right? but tens of thousands of people. Shame, so, so your argument is that the tens of thousands of people that they employ don't matter because they, they, they use they, robots? and they're, they're eliminating those people by the day with robots. They don't give a fuck about people. And I, I'm sorry, but they're... They're obsolete. Those people are going to be gone, so, just like the Uber drivers, just like all but the do you truck know who, drivers. But do you know who's actually in charge of companies like uh, like Amazon? We Not are. Jeff Bezos. We are. The yes, consumer. The, no, the, yes. the shareholders. No. Bullshit. I call okay. bullshit. Shareholders control. And if you think you control by your dollar by spending money on Amazon, you're not. That's fucking horse shit. Shareholders who fucking control the company control the company. They make decisions, not you and I. We, My we, point is, is that is if, is that if we online. stopped giving them money, what happens to your plan then? Who else is that money going to come from? You, if Amazon went out of business because gonna, they're not going to go out of business, but you have to think of scenarios uh, like that because Why? that because that's the logic of the it's argument. It's illogical. You think that company's going to go out of business because they're paying. 0.140% in value added tax every time I buy a fucking guitar string pack? No. But it's should, not going to happen. But, but, you know, should businesses have to pay the government a tax to they're exist? Not, they're not exist. They're not people. Yes, that's It's still business, a business. You, you still buy from it's them. It's a business that consumed all of our retail stores. They're gone because of Amazon. I understand that. But I'm still trying to make the point that if you're saying that, you that we're going to fund, how do we we're going to fund the, the UBI by taking money from major corporations, that doesn't no, because all you're going to do is take them that. out of the country. That's a wealth tax. That's not what we're suggesting. We're suggesting we take it from value added tax only from automation, robot but truck again, miles. All of the, those production companies who who do that, who, who like who's to say that that they won't run to China? That. They, Who's to say that that's always the argument? That's, who, a, that's who, the worst argument you can. It's have not made, the by worst the way. argument. Who's to say? <laughs> already ran to China. Who's uh, who, Who's to say that a major company like even GM, for instance, who even took money from the federal government, who's to say that with all these, you know, say he gets elected and and that's like the new plan and like you know that that's what happens that he would sure. take money from GM because they use automation to build their vehicles. How do you know that they, they wouldn't take you know that company and say I'm you know we're gonna go to Belgium now. The, and, not, and not even manufacture United States anymore, but but still sell the vehicles here. Because that's irrelevant. They're already using Amazon. So whether they make the robots here or they make the robots there, it doesn't fucking matter. The argument that Trump made that he's going to bring Samsung and LG to make their washers and dryers here, he brought a factory full of fucking robots with no jobs for America, with tax companies, tax cuts to Koreans, because he doesn't give a fuck about us. My argument is 
not against your argument. Your argument's incredibly valid. We should not have the government doing anything but what they're good at. And that's the only thing that the federal is government what's in the Constitution. has ever been... No. The only thing the federal government has ever been good at, ever. And it's not the Constitution, unfortunately. That was the founders. No, that's what I'm saying. You know, I'm saying that they need to go back to what the Constitution is saying. And that what We're getting there. What, what their powers are. Because I'm going to dial back on that because you're right. You're 100% right on that. And that's where I'm fucking going with this. <laughs> My argument is what the federal government does now... The only thing it does now, good, is write checks. That's all it does. It's useless past that. Mm -hmm. Past giving me a... It does checks on time. It does fucking the IRS. And it's right there at my door waiting for my taxes mm -hmm. always. So the, monitoring my income, doing all that... I guarantee you that else. the Founding Fathers, if they knew that we had an IRS and an income tax, they'd blow their Thomas fucking minds. Thomas Paine <laughs> suggested a freedom dividend to every... American. Right, but think States. of the time period. They only had 13 colonies. We're talking about 330 million people we now. Are, and we're talking about a bloated system that's already bloated, that's already wasting money. And the problem is, is how do you get it done, right? How you get this There's solution. not enough money to give 330 million people $1,000 a month. The, there, the numbers don't there, add up. There is. There absolutely is. So when you break down by the money, you the, know, it's $3 trillion, right? We spend $800 billion in healthcare alone in just waste. Just fucking waste. Just because of bureaucratic waste in healthcare, because government healthcare is a problem, and I agree. Government getting in there is a problem, and I think this is where we need more libertarians. Fucking getting government out of healthcare. So I agree with you. I think that UBI, and this is not a perfect picture, because I agree with you. Democrats don't do anything right in this, but UBI with a true free market would be a good balance to solve a problem like poverty. A true free market wouldn't need UBI to work, is, is my point. It would right now. That is the you crux of just, my point. You're right long term, but you're not right now. If all of a sudden overnight we had a, a, a free market, that wouldn't solve our problems. It would exacerbate it. Immediately, if all of a sudden everything went free market, Right, like that? Well, because you're assuming that, that, that there would never be a social safety net for anybody, and that's not true. Because I don't, we've seen, I'm not assuming that. We've Voluntarism seen, is right. everything, man. That's, we see it all the freaking time where someone but, sees a story of some grandma who like needs her meds and or and you know some sob story on, sure. on the internet and people make thousands of dollars off of that because Absolutely. they can no, pull gun, at the empathy of right. others and Don't fund me is a real thing and people no people um people no i, I feel like you think they have to pull it i think people just naturally want to help people right i think we're good people because in nature. It, it perpetuates um, our our species and that's why we but do that's it that's where i'm going with this is that <laughs> the idea of abundance makes us feel more positive and and takes the economic boot off of our throat and it makes us want to give more and when we have a feeling of of scarcity our iq drops and and all this. so when we take that money that's already being spent and already being wasted and already being generated because AI and I really emphasize the Myron debate is phenomenal because Myron fucking makes the liber libertarian debate perfectly. He is true fucking libertarian and I fucking love it because he's, he, he fucking makes fucking Andrew Yang stumble <laughs> a couple of times. But I think they had a good back and forth in the aspect that the goal is the same. The goal mm -hmm. is government doesn't work and we need to change it. And we don't always agree on everything, right? We can't. I can't agree with him on guns, but I'm going to vote for him because I think that he, when I talk to him and I look at him in the eye, I think that he's an honest person. And that's the only reason I voted for Bernie Sanders last time. I don't like Bernie Sanders' policies at all. I fucking hate a lot of it. But like um, like Rogan, I uh, and I'm not saying it's a flavor for the week situation with Rogan. <laughs> I don't want to... He, they're he's, they're he's, getting on the bandwagon is what it, it is. That's, that's it. Well, no, it's, I it's think... because of Hillary because she had to open her mouth again t to stay in the in the public eye. So I, ah, so I think that, back in. she's I like, think... I never liked Bernie. He didn't do anything, and I everyone's bottom... like, "Fuck you, we love Bernie." Uh, yeah, <laughs> right, that's like, <laughs> everybody's go go against the grain because fuck Hillary, right? But no, I think that this 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 election is gonna be different. I think that you're gonna see Yang come out as a fucking strong runner in this next only because of the ground. He would have to get on the next debate, honestly, because he will. It's be gonna on come. The next it's debate. gonna come down to Mark him and words, and Tulsi. Be on the next debate. Him uh, and Tulsi really have to be on the stage it. because if Warren Biden is like Fuck our ticket, man. dude, come it's on. Not. Dude, it is going to be a horrific. What's going on with Tulsi right now? So, so Tulsi is. She's suing? So I think she's trying to make a point. Uh, it's not a very good one because she's, you know, she's, you know she, like I get when when people make a lie about you, but like as a public official, like 
you don't have the right to sue for someone saying on you know on un, untrue things about you and that that, that actually is a, a supreme court freedom law speech. like yeah. and it, 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 you know it is freedom of speech i should still be able to tell you let, let, See, the argument can be made though that she's literally defaming her ability to become president oh, the def defamation character, of character thing, thing is that yeah. she's impeding her ability to move forward in the presidency and that nobody it, what if she were to do that to hillary clinton i guess that's her i'm almost thinking that she's doing it because she knows that most of us hate Hillary Clinton and that she's trying to get brownie points, mm -hmm. but she's setting a bad example because she's still saying that freedom of speech, it, it like it doesn't yeah. matter. And it's the number one most important thing. Because so. I'm I'm against the idea that I, I should be able to say whatever the fuck I want about anybody, whatever. Yeah. Unfortunately, I don't agree. Yeah. So I understand that freedom of speech reigns supreme for me, um, and that goes with biology and all of you. Uh, when it comes to my natural rights, there. I'm I'm an I'm I'm totally an absolutist tonight, and I don't feel like con on compromising what what my rights are, and I, and, and, and and I think that we've gone too long. As Americans compromising, like you know, especially that's after true. after the terrorist attacks on on on, on, oh, you know, on uh, man, September 11th, you know, and, I am and, at a heart libertarian because I agree with you, man. I fucking agree. I am not willing I'm to compromise. Go and have to agree as well. Yeah, honestly, nice. it, it's like I think I'm uh, fucking. Yeah. Oh, like just knowing what I know about you politically, even though you're a very shrouded mystery, Justin. Uh, <laughs> I uh, it's more coming to a head pretty you, soon. I, I know hey, I hey. know enough about you to know that you lean very libertarian in in, in the roots I like of. I to stay out of politics a little bit, you just, know. But if I'm gonna lean towards something, it's probably gonna be libertarian. I like him, be, be, you know, because he doesn't want to put his foot in his mouth, and that's why he doesn't talk about to. his views a lot, because he, because mm -hmm. like he doesn't want to see my new. Like, like you know, I'm, I'm yeah. uneducated on something, and then like be wrong about an issue, and then say that, yeah. that that's what I believe, and that's yeah. and I and you know I, and I, you know I I, I I like that he has the foresight to see that ahead of absolutely. You know. No, I admire that, and I I think because I'm the I'm the antithesis of that. I'm the first to fucking jump right into something, but at the same time, Wait, like, I like to be wrong too. You don't. You yeah, know what I'm saying? yeah. We talk about <laughs> so this a lot. It's, it's good to be good wrong, to, but you know. Somebody is steering in the right direction. But, hey, no, it's not this. Well, no, <laughs> I, I think that you, you've got the... He, he's always... Justin, you've always had a good perspective on just kind of seeing things from a, a above, uh, like a bird's eye view kind of thing, which I think is important because not everybody can do that. You know? perspective. You, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. No, because I, I, I get passionate about things and I over-talk people and stuff, but it's always like at that point where like... I um I feel so strongly about something that it comes out in that way, but I, I'm always willing to accept that I'm not right about it, and that I'm probably made a, a very big mistakes in certain regards. Um, well, I mean, I think it takes you know incrementalism, man, slow change. Just like me, you know, like, <laughs> I'm not good at it, but I try like a motherfucker. I think everybody's <laughs> doing it. You know what I mean? So it's. Uh, I also think is, you know. Trash Marianne Williamson all you want. I I don't really like her that much as a presidential campaign, but I think she makes some really weird spiritual point of view. I was Isn't never she the orbs the, one? Yeah, the orbs. I'm never. I'm not, I'm not going to sleep with salt lamps. Not gonna happen. Oh God. Marianne Williamson. She's like right? super new age, I guess. I don't yeah, know. It, too new age for me in some aspects, but there are some things that I, I agree with a lot in the aspect that we as a human species are going through a transformation. In that, oh, it's inevitable. Trump is a perfect example of that transformation. The polls were wrong. Everything we thought we knew about where things stand, you know, numbers wise, wrong. He, he, he fuck you to the PC call. People need to speak openly about who they are and what they think, even if it makes them look bad. This is why we do these things. Like Everyone has, has the right to out, you know, has the right to out them, you know, them, uh, themselves and their ignorance. Mm -hmm. You know, that's right. Why, why keep that quiet? If they're it stupid, like you should, ago, should, should, should see it. <laughs> I, I, I seriously did it like twenty minutes. I say stupid mm -hmm. shit all the time, but you know, at the same time, like, if anybody knows me, I would never want to ill anybody. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I want yeah. the best for most people, um, except for the assholes trying to bum cigarettes off me in downtown Rochester. I'm just kidding. <laughs> da -dun I'm yeah, kidding. I heard that. Oh, is that Jesus? Yeah, that's Jesus. <laughs> so, you have any last uh, last words here, we Justin? Do. Um, Start with you because you don't talk is, as much as we do. This has been good, honestly. <laughs> oh, yeah? dude, this is good. I wish thank we had more time. For, thank you for coming by. Again. Thanks. Yeah. Um, it's always good to learn. We should do regular perspectives. 
like regular Brandon Finney episodes. Like, yeah. It's well, I mean, it's good it's good for me because dynamic. it it kind of helps me, you know, f- you know, formulate a, a good argument for the campaign. And you make solid arguments, man. Yeah. I think that sure, that's something that is fucking is hard to um to re- to find in people nowadays. Is that people that that that, that stick to their beliefs but also are open to ideas and transform and 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 really just you could take you know logic and numbers and metrics in in and look at all of it and and Mm -hmm. make a solid argument from it there's not many people out there that aren't swayed by you know party politics and stuff like that i don't i don't believe in being in an echo chamber because how do you learn from that you know it's it's just your own you know like your own perspective and how do you learn from beyond that and you know again that's like what happened I, to the democrats that's literally what happened to the democrats they well they believe in things in like lockstep you know because it's always like an us against them thing and right but now it's not that simple it's ever. not that simple but that that's why they fail yeah. agreed you know because they don't think outside the box and it's yeah. it's all about sticking to the script and they're all going to stick to to these certain things to make sure that they're pro- you know like like their guy or girl gets in office and that's it you know Which it, is shit it's just the pendulum you know swifting it's failed it's failed yeah. a lot of people yeah um and it's exactly that it, and when that pendulum swings it swings hard in both directions mm-hmm. and the thing that it does disservice to is the american people and the rest of the world who like what's america gonna do next they're like the crazy ex-girlfriend right they fucking took a bunch of drugs and they're calling me late at night i have no idea what's going on they showed up at my house knocking on the door 3 a.m i've got a new girlfriend and they're upset you know you don't know what america's gonna do next because they took the wrong fucking dose of lsd and it had a little bit of fucking (laughs) dmt in it they didn't know all right so on that note at that time i meant to dirty trip not clean (laughs) (laughs) So on so, that note, Mark, do you have any last minute uh, I words do. here? My, right. my, the, the thing that I think is, is always refreshing <laughs> and why I really, really like to have these conversations <laughs> is that we can open perspective and dialogue and ideas. Mm-hmm. And the only thing that I would say is so important to myself, I try to remind myself this all the time, is be be open to, to that dialogue. And mm-hmm. I think the thing that's doing us disservice, and this is why like we need to just hang out more often, like we'll smoke blunts or whatever. But it's gotta happen more often because we don't have these conversations enough that's not that's in person. And I think this is why we started the podcast. When we started it, when we talked to you when you, he was our first guest, we're mm-hmm. saying it now again. We're not talking enough as people. Yeah. We're texting <laughs> our feelings and all of that. Sorry, that was my butt cheeks. It was. Oh. We get an interaction. It's okay. Is that, that's you, Mark. It is me. I thought I had it off. Oh my god. Um my but song is done. It's <laughs> that's my timer. Now I'm gonna go fuck it. I'm gonna go get some frozen foods. I need some brownies. Who's got brownies? We don't talk to each other enough in person. <laughs> and text is breaking down that ability to converse. And the more we text, the less we talk. Mm-hmm. Right? And the less we talk, the more we consent to, right? I could talk about this stuff forever, you know. Yeah. But unfortunately I've got I've gotta go. I know. So hey, on that note. Thank you for coming on the show. Yes, today. and for coming by, man. a phenomenal episode. And for, and and for really those really who want to follow me in my campaign, you can go to facebook.com slash finney for nh That's P-H-I-N-N-E-Y-F-O-R-N-H. Um, the, uh, the website is finneynh.com. That is still a work in progress to update to the new uh, campaign for this year, but I'm running for Stratford Nine, uh, which is Ward Two in Rochester. We have a lot of Rochester listeners, so you guys listen out there. If you want to see real active change in your local area, really listen, be open minded, like we've been here on this conversation. Me and Brandon and everybody, we don't always agree, but we've been really open in the idea of dialogue. You guys got to do it too, because change happens at your st- state level. It doesn't happen with start some at your community. Now start with your community. Even some Asian guy yeah. offering a thousand dollars a month. It doesn't start there. It starts yeah. at your local Donate, co- your local you know, politicians. Food, whatever, and you can vote for a president, but you need to vote locally because that's what makes a difference, in my opinion, truthfully. Um, yeah. And thank you guys for listening. Yeah. Uh, as always, uh, abstract here, abstract there. Transmissions.